Good everyone, I hope you guys have an amazing day. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do today, I'll talk about the difference between generative AI and predictive AI. In the last episode, I spoke about generative AI, right? Um, so which pretty much generates new and original con content. Um, so which is not uh, basically presenting the training data. So for instance, ChatGPT, right? It's a classic um, <clears throat> excuse me, example of uh, generative AI. Now, what is predictive AI, right? So, um, predictive AI, uh, in simple terms, it makes prediction based on historical data and patterns. So, let's say historical uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, historical oh man, my spelling is historical. Uh, so, this is uh, one of the thing with the okay, let me put it in the predictive AI. I just wanted to put it under there. So historical data, and um, it just makes prediction based on this information. Um, it provides, and so okay, that's great. So it 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 makes a prediction, and then what? What's the output, right? What are we trying to solve? Uh, using predictive AI. So it provides forecast, recommendation, and prediction. That's the main um, criteria, or that's the main uh, requirement when it comes to predictive AI. If you are after forecast, recommendation, prediction, uh, then you're going to use predictive AI. You can't use generative AI because generative AI often produce outputs like text, image, and music, like for instance, like I, like I said in the last episode, that if you are wanted to have a conversation, right, kind of um, model. Um, so you can use something like ChatGPT, and ChatGPT is based on generative AI, and it does not really need to use the historical data and patterns to give you that, right? It just breaks down your <clears throat> the language semantics and give you an output based on that. Um, so can you give me an example, if you might ask, what's the predictive AI use case, right? I mean, like I said, right, it provides forecast recommendation. So where does it use, right? So if I wanted to talk from a Salesforce perspective, where does it use? Uh, so you can use under sales forecasting. Uh, you can also use fraud detection. Um, and if you are trying to build a recommendation system, right, you can use uh, predictive AI there as well. Um, and demand prediction is one of the another classic example of um, uh, predictive AI, right? And now, one of the, like I said, right, and I, as I started with this uh, conversation of the predictive AI, I did mention that uh, predictive AI makes prediction based on historical data and pattern. So one of the key difference um, between the generative AI and predictive AI, so predictive AI relies on historical data and patterns for prediction, but whereas in case of generative AI, it does not rely just on the historic data, it generates the new content. Right? That's the difference. It generates a new content, whereas predictive AI do not generate a new content. Um, so, um, now you must be wondering, hmm, uh, where, what's the most commonly used algorithm? Like, you remember if uh, I talked about GANs uh, in the previous um, episode of Generative AI, the, the generative model, like GANs and autoencoders, right? And there's one more called RNN as well, which I didn't talk about it, but uh, that's all right. So GAN and uh, autoencoders, the, the most commonly, which I mentioned, and these are the most common generative models. Uh, whereas when it comes to predictive AI, right, we don't use this. We use supervised or regressive algorithm. You remember I gave an example when I talked about um, uh, supervised algorithm, like house price, right? So yeah. That's one of the example of predictive AI. So we, I used a regression model there, right? Now, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> so that's um, now. The, I mean, there's not much to cover there, but I just wanted to mention one thing, right? Uh, that uh, one of the most common applications, like I said, um, is the sales forecasting fraud detection, right? Uh, but that being said, it's heavily used in financial modeling, uh, predictive AI, and it's also used in business intelligence. So that's something I just wanted you guys to remember that. Um, and whereas if you talk about the generative AI, it 
we don't use that for you know risk assessment or any such aspect right we just normally you know anything to do with the creative task that's where generative ai is used right now one important thing um you just need to remember in predictive ai uh, or predictive artificial intelligence uh, your there is an evaluation metrics uh, that we often talk about. Obviously, you need to know right an evaluation based on prediction accuracy. So your there should be accuracy in what you know the model is predicting, right? So there are uh, the metrics like RMSC and MAA. Um, so this is uh, RMSC. Uh, I don't want to go into the details. You don't have to know. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, but just the terms you need to remember. Um, whereas, if you talk about generative AI, you are it's, if you if you consider from a valuation metrics perspective, um, it's usually evaluated on creativity, diversity, and the quality of the generated content. Right. So obviously, now I didn't mention the tools and frameworks that you can use uh, to build both of the stuff. You can pretty much use um, TensorFlow if you like right and um, that is very commonly used um, and in predictive AI scikit learn uh, is high, heavily used um, and um, but that being said right you can use PyTorch for both right I mean I use PyTorch it's one of my favorite tool uh, I don't use TensorFlow much uh, because PyTorch I find it very easy to do things um, using PyTorch so if you're interested you can just go to you know, PyTorch, right? So you can go to PyTorch here and you can start, you know, playing around with it if that's something interesting for you. Uh, but that being said, you don't really have to know for this course uh, because this is not a programming course. This is not an artificial intelligence course. It is an artificial intelligence course, but with the twist, right? We are uh, trying to get different people onboarded with the concept. So when I say onboarded with the concept, uh, I'm not talking just developers or just testers. I'm talking about the business people, admins, um, uh, product owners, product managers, uh, CTO, CEO, you name it, right? So that this certification will really work for them, uh, especially if they have some idea about what Salesforce is all about, right? Have done some work on Salesforce space ecosystem. Uh, I don't really wanted to touch about PyTorch. PyTorch is if you're a developer or an AI engineer or machine learning programmer or a deep learning engineer, then PyTorch will be something I would highly encourage you to look at it. I do a lot of work on PyTorch as a part of my Climate Change Foundation. I do a lot of work on this, uh, usually around the, 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 the climate change model, and I build uh, stuff using PyTorch. Um, so, yeah. So that's from a development aspect, but you don't really have to know from a Salesforce certification. But if you are really interested, you can you know have a look at it. And now, just please don't ask me question around oh what's the future about it, uh, you know how much money you get. I'm not really interested in that conversation. For me, I tell people one thing: don't run behind money. Don't be, run behind tooling system. Just try to see the value you can add to the ecosystem. That's all about it. The more value you add, the more you will be rewarded, which people fail to understand, right? They just look at the tools. Oh, yeah, this tool is in the buy-in, and that person is making, let's say, 200, 300K. Oh, I'll get into that, and I'll make 300K. That's a wrong way to look at things. Maybe that person is making massive impact in the ecosystem. Maybe that person is making massive impact in the community he leaves, right? For instance, he's building solutions. Uh, which touching millions of life in a positive way. And are you thinking from that perspective, right? You're only looking at one side of the equation and say, oh, yeah, he, this guy or he or she or they, whatever, right? They're making 300, 400K a year. Oh, I should be getting into that and making that. Uh, nothing wrong with that. But in my opinion, that's the wrong way to look at it. You should always think from a value uh, perspective, not just from a tools and um, just a money perspective, right? That's just a secondary aspect of it. The more ma value add to the ecosystem, the more you'll be rewarded, right? That's my perception. You, you're you most welcome to disagree. So, yeah, that's pretty much I wanted to cover in this episode. I hope you guys have an amazing Tuesday. Adios.